Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to our channel uh, where we discuss everything to do with ACCA, uh, finance and accounting, careers, etc. etc. I'm your host, um, Zahir Sayyad, I'm an ACCA member. If you wish to know more about me, please uh, visit the video in the link where you will get to see here my bio. Uh, as I promised, uh, you know, in the bio itself that, you know, I would like to cover areas around audit, reporting, maybe taxation, you know, UK taxation, especially for, for the students who are doing UK taxes and varied other topics that I enjoy, you know, talking about. Uh, so in one of the uh, series that I've started is to talk about, you know, the audit paper where, uh, you know, I've done video um, on audit risk, you know, which is one of the most common areas where student uh, face challenges. Uh, in that I did mention uh, something about uh, the assertion. So if you've not watched that video, you know, you can always uh, go to the link, uh, you know, where, uh, you know, you will find, uh, you know, what that topic was and what the discussion was. So uh, I mentioned, uh, you know, assertions. Now, for people who are unaware about uh, assertions, assertions are basically, you know, these attributes or characteristics about a balance which are at most risk, right? So, uh, you know, when we talk about audit and when we talk about auditors risk, the biggest challenge is that, you know, the auditor uh, may give an incorrect opinion. When, you know, say a balance is not correct, despite that, you know, the auditor has said, that the balance is true and fair, right? So uh, the biggest challenge for the auditor is to ensure that everything is valued correctly or if it is uh, valued incorrectly, get them, you know, rectified or accordingly, if it is not rectified, give, you know, the modified opinion. So in one of the things uh, that the auditors do is to ensure that they do, you know, substantive procedures. Now, when we say substantive procedures, these are test of details where you go into you know, the, the intricate details about the transactions. Now, these transactions could be p &L or could be, uh, you know, financial position as well. So when we talk about the assertions, you know, there are assertions which are relevant to, you know, the profit and loss. And then there are assertions which are relevant to the financial uh, statement, right? So this video today, I just wanted to quickly talk about what are these assertions and uh, again, something that, you know, the students uh, do face usually trouble is remembering, you know, remembering all of these assertions because there are, you know, uh, quite a few. But, uh, you know, the way, you know, I like to remember them is to do an acronym. Okay, Now, what is this acronym or a short form is, uh, let's say if we are talking about uh, financial position, you know, we are talking about statement of financial position where there are assets and liabilities and then there are you know all of these balances which are at risk so if we have to remember what are those risks that these balances face remember the acronym PACER okay again the acronym is PACER okay now what is PACER so I'll go through the uh, assertion one time at a go so that I'm also able to explain what do we mean by individual assertions? So, PACER, the first one is presentation. Now, presentation, simply put, is, you know, whether, you know, you have been able to present the balance correctly. Let's say, you know, you've not, uh, you know, you've not put it or you, let's say there is a balance which should be in the current account, but you've put it in non-current. So, a current asset has been identified as a non-current asset or a current liability has been put into a non-current liability, right? So when we, when we talk about PACER, the first one is your presentation. So try, to, so try and remember that if there is a problem with where the balance has been put in, right? That is one of the risk that is the auditor's face because it is quite possible. And uh, this is something that, uh, you know, especially around say lease, right? Now, if you talk about the IFRS uh, 16 leases, we don't know there is a, cha a challenge with, you know, the financial uh, leases if they've not been uh, classified as um, or presented as, um, you know, an asset and a liability, right? So if that's not been there, there is a problem with the presentation, right? So that's the first, uh, you know, point, which is P in PACER. Then the second one is A, which is accuracy now accuracy is to do with you know valuation so let's say in the same example if the liability is not accurately calculated 
right and if it's not valued correctly because you will remember that for you know for the lease you have to put up the amortization table to see you know what is the opening balance closing balance you know what is the current non current so if that has not been done properly you have a challenge there right so again if it is not valued correctly if it is not accurately given the amount is not given accurately then there is a problem so that's your second one you know so accuracy then comes c wherein you've got uh, completeness right so the completeness is where uh, if all the items that are supposed to be there are there on the financials or not so let's say there is very common example um, you know where one of the procedure is that you go from you know the uh, you know the the physical to the books so let's say you go and visit a factory and you have done a you know inventory count you go to uh, the books and see if it is all there or not so my buzzword here is all right so if all of the inventory that you saw physically are they all there or not so that ensures that it is complete right so again i hope and well i'm hoping that i'm able to do another video on the procedures as well but for now you know this is one of the procedures that we do to figure out whether your inventory or your assets are complete or not right so if it's not complete again there is a problem that it is not valued correctly there is there is understatement or there may be overstatement whatever the case may be so here there is another assertion which is completeness right then comes the next one which is existence now existence is basically you know on your financial you have an asset you have a computer you have a machinery now this is again going into one of the procedures that we do the opposite of going from physical to the book we go from book to the physical right so you've looked at in your in your in your uh, you know fixed assets register you see that there is a you know there is this computer laptop or machinery whatever you know you want to go and see if there is actually there or not right so when you want to see whether it is actually there or not that's existence right so therefore when you are you know trying to look for you know what are the procedures that you want to do these are all the assertions that you are trying to figure out you want to do a procedure which will confirm you know presentation which will confirm accuracy which will confirm completeness which will confirm existence and this brings to my last one uh, for the financial position which is r which is rights and obligations right now rights and obligations is the most simplest one and something that we all enjoy uh, doing as a procedure is to figure out whether the asset or the liability is truly yours you know if you say that this asset belongs to me you want to check the title uh, you know of the asset to see whether this asset really belongs to you or not or if there is a liability whether it is truly yours or if it's if it is there whether you've taken it into consideration or not right so that rights and obligation right you need to again do a procedure and figure out whether you know it is there or not so this is your pacer now as i said in an exam uh, you should try and do a procedure for each of them and as i said i would like to at some point in time do another video where we discuss the procedures but for today you know uh, pacer is something that you use for the balance sheet item right so if they've given you receivable they've given you payable they've given you fixed assets right for all of those you know pacer is what you use then moving on to the income statement because you know the paper can you know be unpredictable and you can have maybe one of the items from pnl it could be sales it could be uh, uh, could be purchases right who knows right so if you've got any item from the pnl then the procedures that you do to confirm the assertions uh, is paco right now i'm sorry if you find them funny but you know as i said i wanted to try and do something which you will remember and believe you me i have remembered these right from my own exam time right so i'm talking about you know good 15 uh, odd years ago you know when i was giving the acc exams at that time i you know had done this paco and pacer now when we talk about paco uh, almost a lot of them are uh, similar so there is a presentation again 
let's say in presentation as far as income statement is concerned it is quite possible that you should have put something under operating cost you put it in cost of goods sold let's say you know depreciation the most common one people would put them in administration expenses where in the absence of any information given to you they should ideally go into cost of goods sold right so that could be a challenge so presentation again is common between pacer and paco right then comes accuracy so again the valuation ensuring that it is accurate the values are given correctly and again it is to do with say depreciation not calculated correctly or the purchase is not uh, you know booked correctly or whatever the case may be right if it is not valued correctly if it is not accurately recorded then there is a problem right so you do procedures to figure out whether it is accurately recorded or not so that's your p and a the next one right the next one here now over there if you remember we talked about completeness and again here there is completeness right so you do look at you know uh, whether all the purchases that you made are recorded or not whether there are you know purchases that have been left out and you know maybe you are doing some kind of window dressing right so you purposely left some of the payables out right and that when i say payables it is purchases as well right so uh, you know you do procedures to figure out whether you know all the purchases are completed complete or not or all sales are complete or not so that's your c over there now as i said paco now in paco there are two c's here right one is your completeness right the second one is your cutoff right now this cutoff is to do with whether these items which you see in the pnl are recorded in the right area or not so let's say if you you know you do the, you did these purchases and uh, these purchases even though they were made on the 31st of march right they were recorded uh you know they were not recorded uh, because you know you know you were trying to maybe deflate the payables in some manner right so if they have not been recorded and they have, or for let's say more often you will have the problem of cut off in sales because the sales were from first second third fourth fifth april but you still recorded them right because you wanted to inflate the sales right so cut off ensures that everything that is there is recorded in the correct areas uh, in the correct periods right so that's your uh, c in the paco right the last one the last one that is there because we've covered p a c c the last one is o which is occurrence now occurrence really is quite similar to what you saw in existence right there we actually want to see whether there's a physical asset there or not here whether that transaction really occurred or not so let's say a lot of times we've got bills you know which have been booked now whether that actually occurred or not is something that you want to see whether the sales you know a lot of times we are talking about you know the sales being there whether those sales actually took place or not or whether it is on paper right because you will be able to see the sale was made whether it is the right period whether it is valued but actually whether the sale was made whether the assets really left the warehouse or not whether the customer actually received and acknowledges that yes you know i have received you have a copy of gdn etc etc again as i don't want to get into the procedures but the point being that the procedures need to be such that your assertions are being valued or are being checked uh, appropriately and this is something which i've also again read in the examiner's reports that the students are doing uh, you know as a common problem again my own students i've seen a lot of time when i ask them to send the answers for you know mock paper checking right there is a procedure and the procedure is correct but the assertion is completely wrong right or vice versa and obviously you know you'll not get the marks if you've done that so uh, i do hope that i will do another video on the procedures right but for now remember because these assertions are extremely important they may come in mcqs they may come in the long questions so remember that when we are talking about procedures the assertions that you are looking in the substantive testing right is for the balance sheet you are looking at pacer and in the pnl you are looking for paco right so as long as you follow these and again i keep mention this as far as the audit paper goes because it is so objective 
the problem with the objectivity is you can write and you can write right so you need to make sure that you're following a standard right so if there is a if there's a six marks uh, requirement for the procedures identify at least those six procedures and then again to make sure that you're able to optimally get the marks don't just write all the procedures which is only confirming one one assertion which is say maybe evaluation right or maybe just the title uh, and the you know the rights and obligations spread it out because the examiner does want to see whether you're able to confirm uh, you know this asset liability income expense through various means and not just one procedure right so therefore in the exam follow the format where you're able to cover the paco or the pacer and if you've done that well you should be able to get the maximum marks available right so on that note i hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have please make sure that you do share your feedback uh, if there are any other topics that you would like me to do as i said there are some topics that i really you know find them uh, something that i may be good at right so you know i would like to know if you want me to cover any uh, ifrs reporting topics maybe something with uk taxation maybe something to do with uh, audits etc uh, etc et so please do let me know in the comment section if you've enjoyed the video uh, please do uh, like the video please do share it with your friends and family if you think uh, they will benefit from it and please 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 don't forget to subscribe to our channel thank you so much bye bye